I'm Wanda Miles, and this is Dead Air. Dearly beloved, is this the real life? We are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Is this just bad to Dead Air. Nobody gets on this show alive. Brought to you by 27 Club in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and by Social Security. Income for you, benefits for all. Our guest today, Tom Petty. On this episode of Dead Air. June 7th, the Value City Arena in Columbus, Ohio, 2017. We were up in the balcony. Uh, we were in the press box. Press box. I snuck us into the press box. Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Uh, We love you dearly. I want to thank you for 40 years of a really great time. We're almost out of time. We got time for this one here. The thing that I think I remember the most was everybody, you know, looking at Tom Petty and thinking, man, he really kind of looks run down, you know? He, yeah. I yeah, even said just, that. I was like, he looks like he doesn't feel good. I mean, if he's going for that traveling Whirlberry effect, he nailed it. <laughs> he did. But you know, he still put on a hell of a show. Even though he didn't look like he felt well, he didn't let it stop. I don't think he sounded bad. No, he uh -huh. sounded really good. He jammed. He really jammed. time and just I'm glad we did see him when we did I mean that's for sure yeah it's the music we grew up with everything from yep. the first song to the last yep my two favorites of the entire night I like them all because I'm a huge petty fan but I'd have to say that American Girl was he he tore that one up I thought that was yeah. awesome Around the age of 10, I just fell in love with, uh, with record collecting and, and listening to, to uh, really old 50s records. This would have been around 1960, 61. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me a few years of just being a, an avid record fan. Uh, and then I think when, when the Beatles came on the Ed Sullivan Show for the first time, there you know millions of garage bands came from that and I was one of those guys that got a guitar and learned to play and it was just like you know just like being uh, addicted to it I I had to do it mm -hmm. and it became my whole life and uh, still is pretty much uh, we've never really kept an eye on what was current or what was 
going on at the time. We just tried to make music that we felt was was honest and that it was you could it had a a fairly timeless quality to it. We never really wanted to sound like we were on a on a particular bandwagon. Maybe that had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. But we try really hard. You know, every show we always go for it and give it all we got. And I think we've stayed together. The Heartbreakers and Me has been a big part of uh, building a, a big fan base over the years. This is this is about a, a journey. You know, it's about a long musical journey. And I think, you know, sometimes maybe you're going to connect with the audience more than others. But the journey is about getting all there is to get out of this group of people. Just the other day, they had an old Florida football game on TV, and at, at the, between the third and fourth quarter, they sang a Tom Petty song, and it kind of choked me up because here's 100,000 people, you know, singing Won't Back Down. It's pretty cool. If you're into music and you're really passionate about music, you tend to gravitate towards the songs that actually touch you or that you can relate to. Uh, Free Fallen has always been like that one for me. When it's a long day, living in a seat of, there's a freeway running through the yard. I'm a bad boy Cause I don't even miss her I'm a bad boy For breaking her heart That's really, if you look around at America, that's one of its biggest problems, is you have 
You have corporations that that can never be pleased at a profit. Mm -hmm. No matter what they make, they reckon they should still make more. If if you come up with, you know, the human being that can uh, feel satisfied at what he's making, and that's not many people, but the people in the say the top one percent. Mm -hmm. uh, this idea that any dollar that's my dollar is a good dollar is is a great deal of the problem we face right now. Mm -hmm. Listen, I like making money like anybody else, and I'm I'm paid well. But I think there's a point at which you can you can outprice your audience or or your uh, your base. You know, if the these corporations are, are finding that out now, you know, and. I think it's a dangerous way to live. It's a dangerous way to think. Where all great music survives, this is Dead End. Well, you can't turn him into a company man. Can't turn him into a boy. And the boys upstairs just don't understand anymore. Well, the top brass don't like him talking so much. He won't play what they say to play And he don't want to change But don't need to change There goes the last DJ Who plays what he wants to play And says what he wants to say Hey, hey, hey and There goes your feet on my choice Some folks say they're gonna hang him so high You just can't do what he did There's some things you just can't put in the mass of those kids As we celebrate mediocrity All the boys upstairs wanna see How much you pay for what you used to get for free There goes the last who plays what he wants to play And says what he wants to say Hey, hey, hey And there goes your freedom of choice There goes the last human voice There goes the last DJ When he was a traveling Wilbur, he's like, you know, when you you get brought into a circle like that, Jesus. Yes. With Dylan and, and the Beatles and I mean it's just Roy Orbison. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty heavy company. I'm sure going in there as probably the youngest guy, he had to be somewhat intimidated. That you have Dylan, yeah. Orbison, yeah. Harrison, Jeff Lynn, and Tom Petty. I mean it's like a Space Age Eagles group. Though George liked to surround himself with people that were good at something, you know. George rang my bell one night and, and came in and said, uh, God, I just had dinner with Roy Orbison and Jeff, you know. I got this idea, I've got to do an extra side for a single that I'm bringing out. I need a studio, so I called Bob Dylan, and, you know, Bob had a little studio out at his house, and so he's agreed to let me use the studio. I'm gonna try to write something tonight, and and we just do it, but I thought I'd have Roy on it too, and and if you want, you know, maybe you'd come too, and I, I said, yeah, well, I'd, I'd love to come. Being up and around Being
Very early in the morning, I mean, my wife took a call and then woke me up and told me that Roy had passed away. And then the next call was George. I don't even know if I should say what he said to me, you know, but I'll go anyway. <laughs> when I came to the phone, he said, aren't you glad it's not you? I said, yeah. Yeah, I am. You know, if, you know he said, He'll be okay. He'll be okay. He's still around. So just listen. He's still around. And then that was all you had to say about it, you know. proud to be able to share a birthday with him. The best thing about Tom Petty is the legacy that he left behind. That's something that is timeless. It will never grow old. It will never go out of style. It's a memory that will last forever. Since today's his birthday, I just want to say happy birthday, Tom, and see if he has anything to say. Hey, everybody. He's like strumming, he's strumming, strumming on a guitar. Um, he still has guitar, he still has music. Music is like a vibrational heartbeat to him. There's this, music is very important over there and he's very happy to be part of it. He's a little sad about one of his daughters, so I don't know what that's about. Now, I think I read that there was some sort of fighting going on in the courts with the daughters and the stepmom. But it's like, it's just a drag for him. He's very sorry that it had to end up like this. He, he's around his granddaughter too. And there was a dog or something. I feel like there's animals over there and there's animals that were over here that he loved. I'm feeling like people are hanging in there, but there's a daughter that's really having a hard time. So he's, okay, hold on. He's talking to me, hold on. He said my name. He said, Linda. He got really famous, but it, it's interesting because he's saying he's honoring the person he always was because a lot of that fame and all that energy changed him. His high moments were being with his family, being relaxed, but he couldn't stop playing. And even if he'd had those surgeries and everything, he would have been back playing. And he loved to interact and talk to people about music. So he's with a lot of the greats. You know the guy that wore the sunglasses that sang Pretty Woman? Um, and I know he was in a band with him, but I just saw him. And he was like, happy to see him. George Harrison, I see George again. George is like running all over the place. And yeah, I know it's all about the music, Tom. Um, his mom is there, he's very happy to see his mom. He's forgiven his dad. And I guess another gentleman's there that he was in the van with. There's a lot of dead, um, well, they're not really dead, but there's a lot of past uh, energy forms that were musicians, but one, this one in particular feels like he was with them for many years. Why do you want to come in? I'm seeing that guy from the Dave Clark Five, the one that had that tragedy and broke his neck or something, and he was a paraplegic. He just came in, but I, it's like he's talking to Tom. Like they know each other, or Tom felt bad for him. Maybe even Tom gave money to him. Tom gave money. That's what I'm hearing. Not that he wants any kind of accolades over this, but he just wants everybody to know, you know, it was his earth birthday. Because ba he's back. He's like young, burning hunk, burning love, very happy very energetically easy to get his heaven feet going. 
He just hates to see his family because they're stuck on earth and they're thinking as man thinks. And you know, he's just vibrationally getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So he's sinning. He actually just blew a kiss. Music and traveling and all that was his life, but he wasn't ever truly, he, he feared losing it. So he constantly did it. And he really appreciated the fans, but at the same time, he resented, resented it. So he was like tired and he just wouldn't give himself a break. He just kept going, just kept going. So happy birthday, Tom Petty. Happy Earth birthday. We're very happy you were on this Earth. So am I, he said. He's, he's still smoking. What's it gonna do, kill me? That's, they all say that. You know, when, when I decided to be a musician, I, I reckoned that that was going to be the way of, of less profit, less money. I was sort of giving up the idea of, of making a lot of money, you know. It was what I loved to do. I would have done it anyway. If I'd uh, had to work at uh, Taco Bell, I'd have still been out at night mm -hmm. trying to play, play music. You know, I always tell my kids, you know, find something that you love and within that you'll find some job that you can do and you'll always be happy you'll go to a job that you want to go to one of the most interesting things in the world this is a yoga this is a way of realization try and imagine what it will be like to go to sleep and never wake up think about that children think about it. It's one of the great wonders of life. What will it be like to go to sleep and never wake up? And if you think long enough about that, something will happen to you. You will find out, among other things, that uh, it will pose the next question to you. What was it like to wake up after having never gone to sleep? That was when you were born. You see, you, you can't have an experience of nothing. Nature abhors a vacuum. So after you're dead, the only thing that can happen is the same experience or the same sort of experience as when you were born. In other words, we all know very well that after people die, other people are born. And they're all you. Only you can only experience it one at a time. I want to thank Tammy Poe, Scott Sawgraves, Linda G, the Comanche Psychic, Tavis Smiley, and of course, a very special thanks to Tom Petty. And I want to thank you. We couldn't make a show without you. I'm Wanda Miles. Join us next time for our late great addition to the library, Eddie Van Halen, live on Dead Air. Where all great music survives, this, this is, is Dead, dead Air. air.